today we will be going over how to kind of create your own video presentation for the uh, conference. So um, as I stated earlier, we are going to be using two programs. It depend, um, each of them will provide slightly different results, and it all depends on how you want to do it. Um, the first one I'll be going over is PowerPoint. I know most people, if not all people, are familiar with PowerPoint, especially if you, you know, have made presentations for conferences before. So adding the video capability to PowerPoint is very straightforward. So first step, of course, will be open PowerPoint. Um, whether you want to create a brand new presentation or you already have a pre-existing one, doesn't really matter as long as we are in an active presentation. So here on my screen, hopefully you can see PowerPoint. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to add a couple slides here just to show how the format would work and kind of to replicate, um, you know, an actual active presentation. Let's see if we can do like a little theme here so it's not as boring. We'll do that. Do one of these and that one. So here's my PowerPoint presentation. Again, uh, as long as it's if it's already been created, that's fine. You can just open that one or if you're creating a new one. But what we're going to do is with PowerPoint, we can add voice clips to each slide. So um, this lets you control the flow of the presentation a little more and you have better options to, you know, you can record your voice. If you don't like it, you can record it again and it, you break it up in between slides. So it's not you know, one continuous take and you can always, you know, kind of edit it down. So first slide, I'll have it here. Um, what we will do is go over to at the top ribbon here, we'll go over to insert and then towards the right, we'll see that there is an audio button. So there's going to be an option for audio on my PC or record audio. Here we will need to record audio. Now this, of course, um, is uh, crucial that you do have a microphone attached to your computer. So as long as you have any sort of headset, microphone, anything that your computer can capture your voice in, uh, this should uh, show up fine. So you're, we're on the first slide. We'll click on audio here. You'll see the little context menu. We'll click on record audio. And then this small uh, window will show up. If you want to change the name of it, like slide one, you can, you don't need to, it'll just have a default one. And then you'll see the red record button. So once you're ready, you know what you're going to say, simply click on record and you'll see the total sound length counter starts going up. So as long as this is going up, your voice is being captured. Once you are finished, you can simply click on the stop button. And then once you press OK, you'll see the speaker icon is added to your slide. So I can drag this down to wherever I need. I can make it smaller. Doesn't really matter. You can even put it outside so it doesn't show up here. But now you can see that there is an audio clip here. You probably can't hear this because of how GoToMeeting kind of works with the screen sharing. But that is um, that captured all my voice while I was talking through that part. So that's all you would really need. So yeah, so with this, yeah, you would just kind of record your voice clips throughout each slide. So you would just kind of repeat this process. So if I go back here, I can do the same thing. Audio, record audio, grab some audio just to make sure it's getting it. I'll press OK or sorry, stop, then OK. Make this a little smaller, put it a little bit outside just, you know, so because it will show this icon will show up if it's on the slide. So if you put it outside, it will still play. So you would just kind of do that throughout the entire presentation. And then once you're finished with that, you have two options. If you just want to kind of save it and submit it, we can just take it, take care of it from there. It will be a smaller file size since it's just a presentation with the audio clips. Or if you want to take it one step further, when you're actually saving your, when you're saving your PowerPoint, it, when you go to save as and you choose where you want to save it, there's going to be an option here down where it says what format you want to save it where it's usually it's default is PowerPoint. But if you look here, there's this option called MPEG4 video. If you save it like this, PowerPoint will automatically turn it into a video for you. Um, the file size will be larger. So if you want to submit this, you won't be able to send it via email. You would have to upload it to, you know, a Dropbox or Google Drive or any sort of cloud service and then provide the link. So either way will work because if you save it as a regular PowerPoint and just submit it, it'll be a smaller file and then we can, you know, save it again and convert it to a video and we can take care of it from there. So the main bulk of the PowerPoint tutorial here is just to show you how to do 
the audio clips. Now, the con of this is if you do want to show a um, a webcam feed or something like that, while you can still do it here, it's a little bit easier to do it on Zoom. So usually with PowerPoint, if you're okay with just providing a voiceover over a PowerPoint presentation, then this would be the best way to go. You can add video to it, um, but it is pre-recorded videos. So that's something, if you do wanna do something like that, we can definitely kind of take some time afterwards and look at that. But for, for just the PowerPoint sakes, the simplest, straight, more straightforward one would be just recording uh, a, uh, a voice clip per slide, saving it, whether you wanna save it as uh, the PowerPoint itself and we take care of the converting part, or if you wanna save it as a video, completely up to you, we don't mind either way. All right, so um, any questions on the PowerPoint uh, side of things? Um, yeah, question. How do we figure out the time of the presentation? How long it takes when we're done? You know, we so, have a 30 minute, say a 25 minute time frame. And how do we sure, sort of figure of out if our presentation is going to be 15 minutes or 40 sure. minutes? Yeah. So as you record your voice clips, you will be able to see here, you know, the length of the voice clip itself. Um, so if you, I know it's a little small here, but if I <laughs> kind of hover here, you can see the length. So you can kind of keep a tally of that. If you do create it as a video, you can just see how long it is at the end. It will still save it. You know, it's once you create a video, it kind of creates a separate file as a video. So let's say you finish uh, your video and it's, you know, 32 minutes or 35 minutes. Um, you can still go back into the PowerPoint and see if you can reduce any of those voice clips. Um, so it would just kind of be kind of keeping tally a little bit of how this is going here. And just I th if you go ahead and even before doing all that, you can definitely do a slideshow and just full screen it. And the audio will automatically play as you as you go through it. So you can kind of time it like that as well. So there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, but but yeah, that would be the best way to kind of just as you speak, you know, you can either write it down or say, okay, this is one minute. I want to do like a minute per PowerPoint per slide and kind of balance it out through there. If you have, for example, 15 slides and it's a 15 minute presentation, then maybe one minute or more or less there. Um, so yeah, it would all depend on how much time is allotted and then kind of playing around with the slides and the voiceovers. And remember, let's say that, um, let me go back to home here. Let's say that, you know, this one needs to be edited. You didn't like how this one came out. All you would really do is click on the, uh, oh, hold on, wait, there we go. You click on the uh, audio icon here, click and press delete on your keyboard and it'll just go away. And you can just remove it and do another one. So if I go back here, let me do it again. Do record audio, let's do a quick one. Here it is. Let's say you don't like how that one turned out. You can just, when you see that box around it, if you press delete, the delete key on your keyboard, it'll just go away and you can just do a new one. Um, uh, do I assume that after the voice clip ends, the slide automatically changes? Yes. So when uh, we convert this to a video, that's how it would work basically. The first slide will play, the video clip will play, and now maybe like a second or two will show up, and then it will go to the next slide. If you have slightly more uh, familiarity with PowerPoint, then you know that you can kind of play with the transitions and the animations and how long everything kind of plays through. So if you are comfortable with this and want to add that, then you definitely can. But if you don't want to mess with that at all or don't know how to and just want to leave it alone, once it's converted, it'll pretty much go by the length of each um, voiceover clip. Uh, do we need to have the latest version of PowerPoint? Not necessarily. I, I have the latest version on my computer here. This works exactly the same on any version. The placement of things might be a little different. I know new PowerPoints kind of have this really pretty, like, you know, file and they <clears> call <throat> it the ribbon bar at the top. but if in any version of PowerPoint, as long as you find the insert tab, there should be an option for audio and everything else is pretty much the same thing. It'll just look a little different, maybe a little bit older, you could say, but the functionality and the steps are exactly the same. All right, any other, uh, can we submit pre-recorded presentations? 
yeah, this is all going over a pre-recorded presentation. So PowerPoint will be, you will be kind of recording your voiceover over the PowerPoint slides and then just send it to us and that will be the pre-recorded presentation. Yeah, with format doesn't really matter. As long as it's a PowerPoint, I believe it'll kind of take care of the uh, the quality and the size and everything. So you can just go ahead and kind of create the PowerPoint. If you're worried about the width, just leave it as the uh, as a PowerPoint presentation and don't worry about saving it as a video and we'll take care of the rest. So, so yeah, once you hit save, file save as, if you just want to save it as a PowerPoint, send it over. Um, what's the time frame for presenters to get these recordings out? Uh, so, I mean, on our end, um, as long as you have it, it really won't take that much time uh, to get sent over. So I don't have any issues with that. Obviously, the sooner the better. Um, if there is splicing to be done, I would like to comfortably have a couple days. So I would say, again, the sooner the better. And if anyone can do anything as soon as possible, I'll have it ready then. But this is something that can potentially not take that much time. The only thing that I could see taking time is if I have to join two videos together once I save and convert those. That usually takes around, I would say, if the video, let's say, is an hour, it could take around 20 to 30 minutes to process. So that's the only thing, and that's just kind of a uh, the the program kind of doing its thing in the background. It's not something kind of you know uh, intensive workload. It's just intensive time wise. So I would say to be safe, if I can have everything three days before the conference starts, I think that should be good enough. Um, but again. Uh, as much as you guys can help, if you can send it as early as possible, we'll get it out, you know, at the day of. Um, got a couple more questions here. Aspect ratio. I would go ahead and do 16 by 9, which is the, you know, widescreen format. Um, that's kind of how most video, most videos work and everything. And, and nowadays, most computers are with. So I wouldn't do 4 by 3. I would do 16 by 9 or widescreen. Uh, let's see. Last question I have here. My PowerPoint files are usually too large to email, even without the audio. Um, it um we don't have a specific spot to do it on we can definitely set something up or if you just have a um you can just either sign up for a free google drive account if you have a gmail account already you should have access to their drive um thing which is like their cloud storage and you should have enough space there to upload anything you can also upload it straight to a dropbox or OneDrive, which is Microsoft. There's a lot of free cloud services out there that you can um, sign up for, and you can just use that and send us the link once it's ready. Um, but if you're having issues with that, then we can definitely you know, take some time and see how, what the best way to send that would be. So um, if you do run into that issue or can't figure out how to do the Google Drive thing, just send us an email and we'll coordinate something to get, to get that mm -hmm. file out. Perfect, all right. So I'll go ahead and minimize this and I'll open up Zoom. So with Zoom, like I said, slightly different how it works. Um, if you have Zoom, it can be a completely basic account. The short version of what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a meeting recording. So we're gonna start a new meeting, but instead of inviting people and talking to them, you can just simply use Zoom to have a meeting either by yourself or with the other speakers, co-hosts, like someone asked earlier, and just record whatever's going on kind of like I'm recording this today. So if I were to go into Zoom and just click on new meeting, this is again, completely free um, account. I don't have a pro account or anything like that. So I'll, um, let me, sorry about that. Um, so I would download the Zoom program, again, completely free. You would, once you first open it, you would just sign in with your credentials and you would be in this screen. Um, I can just click on new meeting to start it up. If it's gonna ask me if I wanna join with computer audio, of course, yes, because we want to be able to capture our microphone. And then here's where we would set up what we wanna capture. So if you just want just voice, then here we're good to go. If you wanna add uh, your webcam, then you would just connect your webcam to start video. Unfortunately, my webcam is not uh, functioning right now, so um, I won't be able to show this, but if you click on this, then it would just be like Zoom, where if you press that, let me see if this actually, just picture this is my webcam, this X split thing. Um, and then the last thing would be to do, there we go, orange. So now it's orange. Um, then we would do share screen. So if I click on share screen, I can actually pick what I wanna share here. So I'll go ahead and do PowerPoint. 
and again i'm not live i'm not doing anything i'm not recording i'm just kind of presetting everything so right now what i have going on is i have my microphone active i have my webcam here in orange and then i have my my entire screen being shared so you can see it up here as well with the context menu and you see my voice is going up and down here in green my video is actually going and of course my screen is being shared so how this would work is once you are ready to go you want if you want to full screen your presentation you can of course do that i believe it's f5 yeah f5 here um just kind of getting everything ready invite people if you need to like i said the co-hosts and their their webcam and their audio will also be here and once you're ready to go you would just hit record on this computer and everything you're doing right now is being recorded immediately in a video so webcam will be recorded your voice will be recorded whatever's on your screen will be recorded and all co-hosts will also be recorded so i can just you know talk over my first slide again this we're not using the voice clips in this case if you want that's fine if you want to preset it but if you want to kind of do a more of a flow to your presentation i would just talk over my first slide once i'm done i would advance to the second slide keep talking over that and then once let's say this is the end of my presentation i thank everybody um i'll go over back here click on stop recording and then i would exit that of course so once you stop recording your video is pretty much saved in order to see that video you would have to end your meeting so if you can just go oh, stop share and i'll go ahead and end my meeting you will see this that says converting meeting recording and then once it's done it'll actually show you the file where it's saved to so if i click on here and double click the mp4 file you can see the recording here R remember the um the orange block here should be a webcam so you see it up here um everything i did me switching over and again you can't hear because of how GoToMeeting handles audio on a computer but you can hear my audio as well and anyone's audio that is coming into so this is more of that flow it does it immediately into a a video and you can share anything on your screen you're not you know just uh sticking to powerpoint it's whatever you have on your screen so once you're in uh, zoom here and you click on share screen you can either do you know screen one or screen two which will be your entire monitor or you can do with specific programs as well so if you want to share your entire monitor um such as you know having chrome open with a website and switching everything if you do um oops that's not it so here i'll go ahead and do screen two which is this one so basically anything that happens on this screen is what's going to be shared so here if i do i'll go ahead and record and kind of show you so we're on this computer so right now it's showing my zoom then i can open powerpoint minimize that anything i'm doing here right clicking you know moving around opening my go to meeting that's probably not going to get it well it might actually then if i stop my share or stop recording and end my meeting it'll convert that video real quick and you can see you know everything i recorded so at first it was that then i opened up my powerpoint so if you want to do you know half half of it on powerpoint then go into a website or then open something else and it will capture all of that it just depends on how you set up that screen share and there's a go to meeting part um so so that's how that would work with zoom again it allows for straightforward video you can invite other people and you have less of a control when it comes to kind of chopping up those segments if you want if you feel more comfortable with just a continuous presentation then i think zoom would be better um and you have a little more flexibility with, with what you can show or what you would, would like to show with a screen share um and then it, like I said, immediately converts it to a video and then we'll work with you on how to get that over to us. Uh, let's see, I do have a couple of questions already. Is this a better way to do it rather than recording audio on PowerPoint? Again, it all depends on what you feel more comfortable. Both ways for us works great. You know, 
um, it all depends on what you think would be better for your style of recording, your style of presentation, everything like that. So if you feel better with using the Zoom, by all means do that. Power, if PowerPoint is more of your thing, then you can do that as well. Um, if we were to record an audio video segment on WebEx rather than Zoom, yeah, completely, yes. These are just two that we recommend because you know PowerPoint, again, it's PowerPoint and Zoom, everyone knows Zoom. But if you have your own method of how to record anything, whether it's WebEx or BlueJeans or Microsoft Teams or GoToMeeting, anything like that, as long as it produces some sort of video file, we can handle it after that. So if you're more comfortable with WebEx, go for it. Um, any, any sort of video file as well. Sometimes some video files might need converting. We can take care of it as well. So um, these are just the two more popular things and more straightforward ones. But if you have done this before and are more comfortable with your own program, there's millions and millions of programs that do something like this online. Uh, and it, as long as it produces a video file, then by all means go for it and we'll, we'll take care of anything, any extra things that we might need to do. Um, do you care what resolution we use on a screen recording in Zoom? Not necessarily. Um, definitely, you know, regular resolutions to get a little nerdy here. 720 would be the best one as long as it's some widescreen. At the end of the day, we can play with it. If it's a small recording and we have to stretch it out a little bit, there will be some loss of quality. So um, that's the only thing I would say. But if you are on Zoom and, you know, whatever your computer screen allows for, that's kind of what it will record. So right now, both of my screens resolutions are set to 1080. So once it records, it will capture that. And I think it minimizes it a little. I think if I check here, let me see what it says here. Yeah, so it does do it at 1080. So it does whatever your, your um, computer settings are at, it's what it's going to use. And honestly, to not get too complicated, that should be fine. Um, once you send it over, we'll see what it is. And if uh, the convert, if we need to convert it and there's a loss of quality, then we'll take care of it. And if it's something that we might need uh, to kind of work on, we'll, we'll definitely reach out to you and see what we can do. Um, let's see. If using a mouse to show features when recording in Zoom, will the pointer moving be captured? That's a good question. It should, but usually these um, have... Uh, yeah, so it is. So uh, on this video I'm playing, I see my mouse moving left and right, up and down. So uh, yeah, it will on Zoom. There might be some extra settings. Let me see. Um, I know some programs have some extra settings that show you like if you want to show your mouse or if you want to add like a mouse effect when you click, but that might be some third party applications. Let me see. I'm trying to see if there's any other things here. I'm just looking at the settings real quick. But yeah, I'm not 100% seeing something that uh, can change the behavior of your mouse. So I think for the most part, if you are recording something and your mouse is moving left and right, then it will show on the recording on Zoom. So Asher, this is Mark. I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, if folks are gonna have uh, kind of a, a panel discussion as part of their talk, and Zoom obviously is is the way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they set up the the new meeting, uh, you know they just need to invite their yeah. other participants, and and then they're just recording their Zoom discussion. Correct? Yeah. So yeah, exactly. So in this uh, Zoom meeting that I have going on here, if I invite people, anyone who's in here will be part of the recording. So I'll invite, let's say, eight people if I want. Um, and they all have their cameras or their webcam or their, I'm sorry, their microphones. You can even do with share screen. Um, you can set that all participants can share the screen. And you can kind of take turns if you need to for the panel discussion, if you want to share, you know, show the showcase different things. But yeah, once everyone's in here and they've all set up what they need to, once I, once I click on record, everything that's shown on the Zoom meeting will be recorded, audio, video, and screen wise. So if it is a panel discussion, then yeah, you would just, before hitting record, you would make sure that everyone that is a part of that discussion is in the, in the meeting, and then you would just hit record and it would capture everyone in there. As long as, as long as the person hosting the meeting can hear and see something, it will show on the recording. So if you're scared, if you're worried that, you know, you're talking to someone, you hear them, but you're not sure if it's going to show on the recording, the fact that you can hear them and talk back and forth to them, means it'll show up on the recording as well. 
So if you don't hear somebody in the beginning before recording, that's when you know you would troubleshoot and make sure that everything's working fine. Any other questions, any specifics? Um, again, like I said, we do have, yeah, all of you guys do have support from us when it comes to this. So if there's anything that you do have some questions or if you wanna have like a quick one-on-one -on -one where we can kind of share each other's screens and see what's going on, we can definitely do that. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, please email us at contract at engineerica.com. Have a great day.